Hi everybody, welcome to ellipses day two. Now we've already seen how to convert to completing the square with ellipses and graph ellipses. So now today we're actually going to go backwards. We're going to start with conditions on the graph and then write the equation of the ellipse from that statement. Okay, and we'll start right here. The idea is to write equations in this form and of course to do that we need an H, a K, an A, and a B. And what I like to do with these to help me out is I actually like to graph these points and that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, we're going to do this problem and we're going to graph these points out. Let me expand this a little bit so we can really see what's going on. Alright, so we have the foci at negative 5, 0 and 5, 0. Okay, and I'll just label these with a little F to remind myself. And then vertices, which I'll do in red, at negative 8, 0 and 8, 0. Okay, vertices. Now, if we remember our properties of ellipses, this horizontal value, this 8 units, okay, is the value that goes under the X because it's horizontal. In this case, we're going to call it A because it is our major axis. Okay, and it's horizontal. And you need to also remember the distance between the foci and the center we call C. All right, now remember, we're trying to develop this equation. All right, so let me pr drag it down so we can see it again in the main picture. So in our information here, we've got a few things. We've got our center here at the origin, of course, because the center is always halfway between the foci or the midpoint of the vertices, and you can easily count boxes to find that in this situation. So we know our h and k. Our h and k is just 0, 0. Now, we also know our a value, okay? a is 8, because it's the distance from the center out to the vertex in this scenario. All right? The next thing, though, is we just then need b. Well, I know a is 8 and I know C is 5, okay, but I don't know B, but I can use properties of ellipses, all right, where C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared, all right, A squared minus B squared to do this problem. So I say 5 squared is equal to 8 squared minus B squared, okay, or 25 is equal to 64 minus b squared. Then I subtract 64 from both sides and I get, uh, what is that, 36? No, geez, I can't add, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Helps if I do a little calculation in my head, doesn't it? That's 9 and then uh, 39. Okay, so c squared <coughs> is equal to 39. Okay, and that's really all we need here is that 39. No, B, some, I apologize. Wow, B squared. All right, B squared is 39. Okay, so now we know our B squared value. That's what goes under here. Okay, we know our A squared value then will be 64, and we can write our equation. Okay. So then our equation is, well, x minus h, which happens to be 0, so that's squared, over a plus y minus 0, so y squared over b squared, and that equals 1. Okay? And there you have it. That's one example. So let's look at a second example. Here we have vertical axis of length 10, vertical major axis of length 10, minor axis of length 4, and then center at negative 2, 3. So let's take a look. Our center, we're given this time, so at negative 2, positive 3 is going to be our center. And it tells us a vertical major axis of length 10. Well, to know really what that's saying is, that means from the center you're going to count up half that distance to a vertex. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then half that distance down to the other vertex. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Notice it said vertical, that's why I went vertical. And then minor axis, of course, has to be horizontal in this case, of length two, four, 
So that means we count half of that amount right and left to the outer edges of this ellipse. And of course the ellipse would follow, I missed that point up there, but it would follow that basic pattern. Okay, well you have your horizontal distance here of A and a vertical distance of B so that's what we're going to put into our equation. See it's nice when it's given to us because actually because of these links given to us we know B is going to be 10 and A is going to equal 2. So unlike the previous question we actually don't have to do any real solving for a value. So now we can build our equation x minus h, so that's x plus 2 squared over a squared, which is 4, plus y minus k, so y minus 3 squared over b squared, which is 25, and that equals 1. All right, and there you have it. You see, it's just a matter of really building your diagram and using it to help us find out what we need inside the equation. Let's do one last example. I'm going to pull in my grid again because notice here we have a lot of points defined for us. All right, this time we have foci at negative 4, 2, so negative 4, 2 foci, and then 6, 2 of foci. And then we're told at negative 5, 2 we have a vertex and at positive 7, 2 we have a vertex. Okay. So remember, we need a center, an HK. That is always halfway in between your vertices. So we find the midpoint of these, and that would happen to be right here at our center. So that is, all right, 1, 2, because it's halfway in between. Now we can use that, and we know our A value then, if we count our boxes, our A is going to equal 6 and notice we have a foci again this time and our C then is going to equal 5. So once again like our previous example we find our B value or our B squared value by using this in the little formula again C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Okay so we say 25 is equal to 36 minus B squared. Okay well, that means b squared is equal to, well, 25 minus 36. Anyone? Anyone? 11? Yes. Okay. So we can use that then to build our equation with our center, our a, and our b. So our equation now is x minus 1, because that's the h value, over a squared plus y minus 2, because that's the k value, over b squared, which is 11, and that equals 1. Okay? Thank you very much, folks, and that's it for this video. We'll talk about this some more later.